Okay, I know that I asked you all to memorize this. Okay, uh, because I wanted to do something today. Uh, but I realized that, uh, that we need more time. Okay, no, it's not that. So, but, uh, I haven't figured out a way to test you all on this um, in a way that is efficient. Okay, so I want to advise you to continue to memorize this, please. Okay, so memorize how uh, the motion of a copper rod, uh, or at least a current carrying conductor, uh, just one single piece of wire, okay, uh, is produced. Because when you understand how uh, the movement uh, on a single piece of wire is produced, okay, it will help us uh, in this next step, okay, which we are going to learn uh, today. Uh. So yesterday, we started now uh, by looking at how when we have two, two magnetic fields, okay, when we have two magnetic fields and it interacts, uh, okay, the interaction between the magnetic field will produce two regions of magnetic fields. One will be strong because they are in the same direction and then one will be weak because they are in a different direction. Okay, and uh, we find that the force, uh, okay, the resultant force, or we call it the Lorentz force, but in this case, it's called a resultant force. The resultant force is a force that starts from the stronger side and goes towards the weaker side. Okay, just like Bernoulli's principle, okay, from high pressure to low pressure. So same thing, from bigger, the stronger magnetic field to the weaker uh, region of the magnetic field. Okay, and so I want to talk about some of your drawings yesterday, and this is quite obvious. Uh. Okay, let's say for example, uh, you have a box, and then you know that, okay, somebody is pulling with this 10 newtons, and then somebody is pulling with this, let's say, 8 newtons. We know the resultant force is to the right. Okay, and so when we draw the resultant force, uh, we only draw a singular force, that represents this one. Okay, that upper kejadian akhirnya, kejadian akhirnya adalah begini. Okay, but I noticed that a lot of you, when you draw, uh, you still had the, you still drew this one inside here, which shouldn't be, uh, because this is separate. Okay, of course, when we combine, you can draw it as a lakaran di luar lah. When we combine, we only combine to see which side is strong and which side is weak. Okay, but when you draw the resultant force, notice uh, that the original uh, magnetic field that was around the wire is no longer there. A lot of you, uh, you drew this, you know, you drew this and you still had the <laughs> you still had this one. Okay, which no need already because this one is the resultant force drawing. Okay, so it should be just like this. Secondly, uh, when you draw a resultant force drawing, uh, it should be more lines to represent the stronger force. Okay, more lines to represent the stronger force. And usually, uh, it's just one line to represent the weak, uh, sorry, the weak magnetic region. Okay, usually we just draw one line. And the weak magnetic region, usually it is a, uh, it is a straight line. Uh. Okay, the strong magnetic field, uh, it, you draw as if, macam kamu lukis banyak elastic. Okay. Which is why we call this uh, a catapult field. Okay, or catapult force. Because bentuknya kan macam elastic. Kan? Sorry lah, I don't know how many of you play elastic before lah. But if you have ever had the chance to memburu burung lah. Okay, atau memburu babi dengan elastic. Okay, ini adakah orang yang memburu babi ya, dengan elastic lah. Okay, namanya lah. But either way, the stronger magnetic field lah, because it is so strong, it produces this catapult effect. Okay, so when you draw the magnetic field lines, uh, make sure you draw it as if it is a catapult. Okay, so that's why I put in the exercise yesterday to see how uh, to see how much you understand about the drawing about this lah. Okay, but the biggest mistake lah, as I said just now, the biggest mistake is you still drew the original magnetic field lines. Okay, inside the resultant one, which cannot. Okay, and then another common mistake which quite a lot of you did uh, is you had this the wrong way around. A lot of you, you drew it like this. Huh? Let's say this is X. Kamu lukis terbalik pula. It's wrong. Huh? How do you know whether it is going clockwise or anticlockwise? Again, your thumb, okay, your thumb, right hand, right hand, okay? Right hand, huh? your thumb is supposed to show the direction of current. Kalau X, maksudnya dia keluar. Eh, sorry, masuk ke dalam. Sorry, sorry, sorry. X is masuk ke dalam, ke dalam kertas, ke dalam screen. So, if this is your 
if this is your module, okay, it should be going this way. Okay, and then what you should be drawing, what you should be drawing is <coughs> a clockwise. Because jari kamu, most style kamu punya jari ya, bila kamu buat begini kan, dia akan terbalik macam ni bah. Okay, ini bukan, it is called a right hand grip rule, okay, not a right hand melentik rule. Okay, right hand grip. So when you grip, your fingers will show you the direction of the, uh, the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, for a single conductor. Okay, so those of you who got the direction wrong, but at the end, uh, you still got the force correct. Uh, it's like a, it's like a miracle. Uh. I don't know how you managed to get it correct, but okay, fine. Okay, maybe you use uh, left hand, uh, Fleming's left hand rule. It's fine. But this one, don't get it wrong. Okay, bahagian ini, uh, make sure you don't get it wrong because um, this is something that actually you should have remembered. <laughs> If you remember, okay, when you were doing science in lower form, okay, this is just a continuation of it. Okay, so today the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about the factors that affect the magnetic, the magnitude of the force in a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Okay, so when we talk about the current carrying conductor, the force, uh, okay, will cause it to either go forward or go backward, and actually we have already talked about the two factors. Okay, what are the two factors? Can anybody tell me what is the first factor that affects the kekuatan pergerakan? Current. Okay, one is the current and then the other one is? Magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field, can we put a quantity to this? The strength yeah. of... Very good, okay, the strength of the magnetic field okay um so current we know is i okay and then the force is f la. can somebody give me the hypothesis for this what is the hypothesis if this was an experiment what will be the hypothesis of this experiment the greater the current the greater the magnetic field ah uh, no 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 current and force because these are two factors yeah that affect the force so what is current what is the hypothesis for the relationship between current and force. The greater the current, the greater the force. Okay, very good. The greater the current, the greater the force. As I explained yesterday, love with the fan situation. Sorry, I don't know if you can see the fan. Okay. Here's my good friend, the fan. Okay, the bigger the current, when you press number three, uh, you produce a bigger current. You actually, what you're doing uh, is you're reducing the resistance. Okay, so if you think about it, inside the fan, there is a real step. Uh, okay, there are Rintangan yang berubah-ubah. When you reduce the resistance, you increase the current. When you increase the current, you increase the force. The fan moves faster. Okay. Relationship between the strength of the magnetic field. I'm going to give the letter B because that's what I taught you yesterday, right? F B I. Okay. I hope that everybody, <laughs> I hope that everybody uh, is able to do this 90 degree uh, angle. Okay. Yesterday after the video, can uh, some people said, "So you are sexist, lah? What is this?" No, I'm not being sexist. I'm just sharing my experience. Okay. Generally, girls have a harder time. I'm not saying that guys don't have a hard time. There are still there are also some guys that cannot do this. Okay. But I mean, to be fair, I cannot do this. <laughs> you know that TikTok thing? Yeah, I cannot do that thing with the heart. I don't understand how it works, lah. So anyway, FBI, uh, okay, the. Uh, relationship between the the strength of the magnetic field and the force. What is the relationship, please? The greater the strength of magnetic field, the greater the force. Okay, the greater the strength of magnetic field, the greater the force. Means kita sudah, anu de, apa ini, satu pusingan sudah kah? After Wilson is Michelle, after Michelle is Irdina, after Irdina is Wilson again. <laughs> so what happened to the rest of you in this class? Are you just here, but you are not here? <sighs> Okay, so these are the most important things. Okay, we can talk about the experiment and everything, but essentially, uh, what we need to understand is these are the two hypotheses. Okay, the force is affected by two factors, which is the current and the strength of the magnetic field. The hypothesis that you're building is the bigger the current, the bigger the force, as shown by the fan. Okay, the bigger the strength of the magnetic field, okay, the bigger the force. Let me ask you another question. If current, bahkan, okay, kalau current, we change the resistance. Okay, we change the resistance or we put more batteries. Okay, all this can uh, increase the current. Lah. If you if you watched the video yesterday, 
at the beginning, uh, I said that, okay, we use different, different batteries to show different, different amounts of current. Can lah. Okay, either you increase the voltage or you reduce the resistance. But how do you change the strength of the magnetic field? Anybody want to take a guess? How do you change the strength of the magnetic field? Um, use more powerful magnet. Okay, use more powerful magnet. Huh? So, there are weak magnets and there are stronger magnets. Lah. Okay, and uh, generally, uh, I'm not saying this is true. Generally, uh, an indicator of a strong magnet uh, is a size, the size. Lah. Okay, the size of the magnet, uh, if let's say your kepingan magnet is like very tiny, right? Okay, then you can actually guess that the magnetic field is very small. But if your magnet is very big in size, uh, generally uh, it is accepted that the strength of the magnetic field is bigger. Another way to increase uh, the strength of the magnetic field is to add more magnets. Okay, so instead of satu keping saja, you put more than one keping, two, three keping. Okay, that is another way to increase the strength of the magnetic field. So either you change the size, Okay, which is a little bit hard, lah, okay, because if you change the size, lah, it means you have to make sure that it's you know, blah, blah, blah. But it, the easier way actually is to increase the number of magnets. So in that way, uh, the number of magnets actually represent the strength of the magnetic field. Semakin banyak magnet yang kamu pakai, okay, semakin kuat the kekuatan medan magnet, okay, the strength of the magnetic field. And all this affects the force, okay. So if you think about it, uh, how do I modify this fan? Sorry, my good friend, the fan again. Uh, how do I modify the fan uh, in order for it to spin faster? This is, you know, this is, this is number one. Okay, and it's like, uh, press number three, so much like the beza. Okay, so there are two ways you can think about this. Number one is you either add more current into it. How do you add more current? You reduce its resistance, change the real step. Okay, or number two, you can add more magnets. Either you add more magnets or you change the magnet inside the fan to a bigger magnet. Okay, or yeah. So in that way, you produce a bigger force. When you have a bigger force, then the fan <laughs> will be able to give you more wind. Lah. Okay, precisely how, uh, how many of you have been to Imago near Starbucks there, right? There's this huge, gigantic fan lah, on top of the, on, on, at the top over there. Okay, can you imagine how much force lah, is required to move that kind of fan? You have to think about you know, how much force is required uh, to move that kind of fan. So in order, so you can pretty much imagine uh, that with such a big fan, uh, okay, uh, you can imagine how big uh, the magnet is, how big the magnet is, and how much current is flowing uh, to make sure that the fan is able to move with that much amount of force. Because it's heavy. Okay, it needs a lot of this one. Okay, so... I'm going to quickly go through this. Uh, you can repeat this video again in YouTube uh, and you can silently kemudian lah. Okay, so the inference will be the current uh, will influence the force or the current depends on the force. Uh, sorry, the force depends on the current. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The force depends on the current. Our hypothesis, as you said just now, the bigger the current, the bigger the force. The aim of the experiment will be to study the relationship between current and force. Manipulated variable will be current. Responding variable will be the distance of the copper wire. Okay, so the responding variable, I know, we said that the responding variable is actually the force. Because when we do the hypothesis, the bigger the manipulated variable, the bigger the responding variable. Correct. But how do you measure? Apa yang kamu boleh ukur, okay, untuk mewakili the force? Because there's no way you can count the force. So we, we use this. Okay, distance of the copper wire represents the force. And we call this uh, the operational definition. Okay, as we get nearer and nearer to exam, I will talk about this a lot more. Lah. Okay, the operational definition in my in the video that I posted yesterday, also the same thing. Uh, the operational definition of force is something uh, that we use to represent the thing that we cannot count. We want to know the force actually. But there is no way for us to count the force. There's nothing to measure the force. Kita tidak boleh ukur daya sebenarnya. Okay? So we use something to represent the force. And so we say the distance of the copper wire 
represents the force and this is the operational definition. The bigger the distance, we understand lah. Semakin jauh itu wire bergerak, semakin besar lah dia punya daya kan. The bigger the force. Okay, so we use it as a representation. Okay, and of course, in this case, the fixed variable must be the strength of the magnetic field or the number of magnets. Okay, this one is uh, no-brainer lah. Okay, so this is how the experiment would be. Okay, and this is a very simple uh, ex uh, procedure. Okay, we put the initial position and then after that we turn on. Obviously, it's going to move lah. Okay, just like the video yesterday. Uh, sorry, adjust the rheostat until the emitter reading is 0 0.5 amps and then we measure the displacement. Okay, kita measure the displacement using what? What do we use to measure? A ruler. Okay, use a meter ruler. Ruler, ruler lah, okay, but uh, generally for science, okay, we always use meter rule, pembaris meter. Okay, and then we repeat the experiment using different, different values of current. Okay, the convention is we must always have five values because in order to draw a good graph, you need at least five points lah. Okay, so we usually use values that are very standard lah, 0 0.5 amps, 1, 1 2.5, 2.5. Okay, but just uh, so that you know how the experiment is like. And so the conclusion of this will be the distance traveled blah, 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 very panjang lah. Okay, the distance traveled represents the magnitude of force. This is the operational definition. The larger the current, the larger the force. Okay, the larger the force, the further the distance traveled by the conductor. Actually, for me, this is enough. The larger the current, the larger the force. Hypothesis is accepted. This is how I have taught you how to write the conclusion. We always go back to that. The rest of it is just explanation. Okay, you, you need not copy it thus far. Lah. Okay. So the discussion is why does the copper rod move? Okay, what causes the copper rod to move? Let's hear an explanation. Lah. We talked about this for so long already. Let's talk about this. Why does the copper rod move? What causes the copper rod to move? The resultant force. Because of? Because of the interaction between two magnetic fields. Very good. Okay. Interaction between two magnetic fields. Let's up your game a little bit. Interaction between the magnetic field from the permanent magnet and from the current carrying conductor. This is a very this is a very long-winded answer. Lah. Okay. But uh, I hope I'm getting this correct. Lah. But I think Lester's answer is quite good enough lah, for me. The main point that I want to get from this lah, is the interaction between the two magnetic fields. That is what causes the force. Okay, when you have two magnetic fields combined, you produce a force. Just like Harry Potter and Voldemort. <laughs> so, wow. Okay? Harry Potter and Voldemort, when both of them strike their wands at one another, some force happens. Okay, wow. I don't know why I suddenly thought of Harry Potter and Voldemort. Anyway, so why the current supply cannot be connected for a long time on the copper track? Okay, why is it that we turn on and then we turn off? Okay, and this is because we want to avoid high temperature. Because remember, current is still flowing. When current is flowing, okay, your wire will get hotter. When your wire gets hotter, you will increase the resistance of the copper wire and that will uh, create a not so good effect lah, okay, for the distance. So we want, to, we want to avoid the high temperature. Okay, that's why we turn on and then after we turn off. So that, so that we, we turn on, we turn off and then we adjust the real step. Okay, that's how it works, huh? All right, what will happen if the number of the magnet the magnet increases? The strength of magnetic field increases. Okay, strength of magnetic field will increase. Okay, we have a stronger magnetic field of the permanent magnet. Okay, so I think um, based on the few people that have answered, <laughs> okay, uh, I think you kind of get the idea. Lah. Okay, three, there are only two factors that affect the force. Okay, and all the two factors are actually shown in your two fingers. Okay, D and I. All right. Okay, so uh, these are the factors. Yeah, the other. I'm going to skip this part. Uh, video ini this... activity. <laughs> Sorry, this video I will show you later lah. Okay. Uh, the relationship between the voltage applied across the current and the current. Uh, okay, this one. I will just show you now, okay, but later you can play the video and you will pause now. But the point is this, huh? How, what is the effect of the strength of the magnetic field? We've already established this. The stronger the magnetic field, the stronger the force. Okay, so let's not waste time uh, going into this. Lah. Okay, so when you have a bigger current, okay, when you have a bigger current, you have a bigger swing. 
okay, when your magnet uh, is bigger, look at this magnet, okay, way bigger, or at least they are nearer to one another, okay, you have a stronger magnetic field and you will produce a bigger swing compared to the original one. Okay, this diagram is in your textbook. Uh. Okay, the larger the force, the larger the hi the higher the swing of the copper frame. That is what is that. But now we want to go into another situation. This is actually the main point of today's lesson. Uh. Okay. So far we have seen uh, how uh kalau dia adalah satu keping saja. Sorry, not satu keping. Kalau dia adalah satu batang saja. Okay, just one piece of copper rod. Okay, and you have current flowing in that one rod. Uh. But now I want to up the game, uh, okay, and say that what happens now uh, if we have a coil? Okay, coil uh, is satu lingkaran. Uh. Okay, and this is what a coil would look like. Okay, so previously we are only interested if it's just here only, just one piece of wire or one piece of a uh, copper rod. Uh. Uh, but now I want to put it into a coil. Okay, and I want to put this coil into a magnetic field. Okay, so this is a rectangular coil formed with a piece of copper wire. So now I take that copper wire, okay, I take this copper wire and I put it into, <laughs> sorry, I put it into a coil. Okay, I put it into a coil and I put this coil inside the magnetic field. So essentially, uh, you're going to have this part inside the magnetic field and also this part inside the magnetic field. But the current is still flowing this way. Okay, so if you take a look at this, since the direction is A to B to C to D or D to C to B to A, the current can flow both ways. Lah. It can either flow here. Okay, it, that's one way of it flowing. Lah. A to B to C to D. Or it can flow the other way. Depending on where I put the, the positive terminal of the battery. Lah. And Okay, now take a look. Uh. <coughs> if I put A and B and C and D uh, inside the magnetic field, uh, notice the direction of the current. The direction of the current will change. I mean, it's different. Sebelah right? sini, the direction of current is going this way. This one, the direction of current is going that way. And you know that when the direction of the current changes, the direction of your force also will change. Okay, because the direction of the current also affects the force. If the current is going this way, the force is going this way. If the current is going this way, the force is going this way. So what happens uh, when you put both of these in the same magnetic field? Okay, again, uh, working principle behind our good friend the fan. Okay, let's take a look at this. So this is what is going to happen. Side A, B, uh, let, let's say uh, I put the north pole over here. Okay, I put the North Pole over here and the South Pole over here. So this is the A, B, and this is the C, D. And let's say I have the current flowing over here. So the current flow, as I said just now, is kita yang tentukan sendiri lah. We determine it ourselves. And in this example, the current flow is going from A to B, then B to C, and then C to D. And the only one we are interested in uh, is A to B and C to D. Okay. Now, if you're looking at it from here, like, let's say you put your eye over here. This is your eye. Wow. Okay. <laughs> if you're looking at it from here, you find that A, B, uh, okay, is going in. Masuk ke dalam. Manakala C, D, the current is coming up. Okay. Magnetic field always travels from north to south. Okay. Now, Take a look at take a look at this picture, everybody. Okay, take a look at this and think about how this comes. How machamana this side the force goes up and machamana this side the force goes down. Remember, we are talking now about the interaction between the two magnetic fields. Okay, take a look. I'm going to give you about maybe thirty seconds. Take a look at this picture and exp and think for yourself. Uh, why is it that over here the force is here? Why is it that over here the force is here? Okay. Now, taking a look back at this one, uh, okay, can somebody tell me where is the stronger magnetic field on both sides? Is it sebelah atas atau sebelah bawah? So side AB, where is the stronger magnetic field? Okay, di bawah. 
over here is stronger. Okay, manakala DC, this side is stronger. And we always know that the force always travels from the strong to the weak. So obviously, this is going to be the weaker region. This is the weaker region. So this explains why this force, this side is going to go up. And this side is going to go downwards. Okay, because of the interaction. Interaction causes a strong and magnetic uh, and weak magnetic fields. Force always travels from the strong to the weak. Okay, now take a look at again at this. Huh? Kalau sini dia naik ke atas, that means this one is going to go up and this one is going to go down. So, let's say, uh, okay, let's say this is A to B okay, and this is C to D. So, you're going to have this side going up and this side is going to go down. So, you're going to have this effect. <laughs> Sorry, A to B, C to D. Uh, so, it's going to go like this. Okay, and it's going to continue. Okay, so let's, so the, so the point of this is how does it rotate? Okay, because there is one side that is pushing it up here and this side that is pushing it down. And that's how it rotates. Okay, and it's pretty impossible uh, if you have you no know, current flowing that way for both of these to go up at the same time. It cannot, it cannot happen <laughs> because the current direction is different. Okay, and that's the beauty behind all this. When one side is going up, naturally uh, the other side, uh, because of the interaction, it will also go down. And that is what causes the rotation in your fan. Of course, the question is, how does it continue to rotate? Okay, that one we will leave it for another day. But the first thing that I need you to understand is that the same principle applies. Even if it is a single copper wire, okay, it still applies, you know. Okay, single copper wire, it can go up, it can go down, depending on two factors. Okay, the magnetic field, the direction of magnetic field, and the direction of the current. But when we make the single copper wire into a coil, satu lingkaran lah, okay, what will happen is, one side will go up and the other side will go down. How do you determine which side goes up and which side goes down? You can determine it by using the interaction between the magnetic forces, or you can determine it by using Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, uh, we will come to that in a little while. Okay, let's take a look at this video, everybody. Okay, so the catapult field uh, will exert a force on both sides. Okay, and the pair of forces will rotate it in a clockwise direction. Okay, sorry, before the video, uh, let me ask you, how do I make, okay, let me ask you, uh, I think you should be able to answer this. How do you make the coil turn the other side? Give me two ways. What should you change? in order to make the coil turn the other way. Change the Magnet. Um, <laughs> uh, change <Okay>. the polarity. <laughs> well, sir, now, you cannot just say one word like that and expect people to understand, you know. Change the what? Change the... Then suddenly, well, sir, magnet. <laughs> okay, first of all, you change the direction of the magnet. Instead of here north, you put here north. Okay, here you put south. When you do that, you will change the direction of the design. Okay, another way. Selain daripada magnet. I think direction somebody... Of the, current. the direction of the current. When you change the direction of the current, you will also change. But you cannot change both at the same time, huh, guys. <laughs> if you... Ch <laughs> okay. If let's say this is rotating clockwise, huh, and then you change this one south, and then you change this one north, and then you change the current also, huh, what's going to happen is gonna, <laughs> it's also going to rotate clockwise. Okay, so you only change one factor. Like you either change the direction of the current, Okay, or you change the direction of the magnetic poles. Okay, in order for it to berputar the other way. So technically, yeah, technically, you can actually change the direction of your fan moving. Okay, of course you have to dismantle the butt first, lah. Take take out the butt. Okay, and then change the. You just actually you just switch the wires around me, <laughs> and hope that you don't die in the process, lah. You switch the wires around. Okay, and your fan uh, should be able to turn the other way. Should be able technically, lah. Okay, but janganlah, janganlah gadaikan. <laughs> okay, don't, don't, please don't destroy your fan. Uh. Just so that you can see, you can change. But technically, I mean, theoretically, you can. Okay, just change the direction of the current or change the direction of the, the magnetic field. Okay, don't do both at the same time. Uh. Okay, do both at the same time, you get the same effect. Okay, negative, negative, akan jadi positive. All right. Let's oh, yeah, this is the, sorry, this is the voiceless video. Okay, but anyway, this is how it looks like. Uh, okay. 
So as I said just now, the direction of the current uh, is dependent on where you put the positive and negative side of the battery. Okay? So when if it is positive side, then here is the current flow. And using Fleming's left-hand rule, uh, you can actually determine which side goes up and which side goes down. Uh. Okay? Uh, we will come to that in a little while. Okay? Uh, so this one, you will go up. This is the same thing that we explained just now. Okay? It's going to this one. Kegelom pembawa arus dalam minda minda mengalami. Okay, no way. Kesan putaran ini. Okay, so this one, ah, this rotation effect, okay, is actually the working principle for what we call the direct current motor, okay, or the fan. Okay, a very good example of a direct current motor is a fan. Okay, why does the fan keep spinning? Because there is a coil somewhere inside there that is making the fan spin. Okay, we will. I think we will talk about this. Tomorrow. When is our next class? Tomorrow, ka? Yeah, in the next in the next video, la. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do this together. Ah. All right. First of all, I think you should be able to do number one, number two, and number three. Yes, you should be able to do this. Draw the magnetic field lines for the magnet. The magnet. Okay, this is north. This is south. Draw the magnetic field lines for the current carrying coil. Okay, draw the magnetic field lines to show the catapult field, show the direction of the resultant force. Okay, uh, because I've already shown this with this picture. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Huh? So this is how the magnet, the magnet will look like. Okay, north to south. Always, it's a, it's always a good idea to add uh, another extra line, huh? just to show that it is a radial, uh, it is a radial magnetic field. Huh? Okay, just this extra line do show that okay and then this one remember uh, x is going into the paper into your module okay and dot uh, is coming out of the module okay i cannot there is a way that i remember this lah, okay but i'm not going to i'm not going to tell you over uh, in public space lah. there is a way that i remember how do i know whether x is going in or dot is coming out lah, but i will talk about this later lah. okay so this is how the magnetic field will look like okay this is clockwise because dia masuk ke dalam kertas okay so this will be clockwise and kalau dia keluar daripada kertas okay it will be the other way around okay <coughs> all right first of all notice uh, that the interaction between both also causes you know they are flowing in the same direction and that's a very good thing lah. okay so this is how it will look like so when you add both of these together okay this is what you were doing yesterday, yeah, but you were only doing it with one. And now we're doing it with both. Okay, so when you add both of these together, you notice that over here is stronger and over here is weaker. Okay, the weak magnetic region. Okay, other middle magnet sama, middle magnet kuat. Okay, the middle magnet is sama, middle magnet kuat. Manakala, on top of the going out one is middle magnet bertentangan. So it is lemah. Okay, this one is made of many bertendangan, so it is lemah. And thus, it will cause... <laughs> wow, this is a very... <sighs> okay, same thing. Okay, this is the same thing. I also don't know why this <laughs> slide is so heavy, but... Okay, it's the same thing. Uh. So, the catapult field... Uh, sorry, the catapult force will look like this. Okay? <clears throat> Since up here and down here is weak, Okay, and here is strong and strong. Uh. So we find that, you know, it kind of you know, joins together. Lah. Okay, this is a little bit tough to draw. Okay, but uh, yeah, but try to practice this. Lah. Okay, yeah, because up here, then you want to like kind of balance it with the down there, right? Yeah, so over here is strong, over here is weak. Uh, and so you have this, this is how the, the resultant magnetic field will look like. Okay, this is before. Okay, this is after. Okay, this after this is how it will look like, and that's why you will have the force. Kalau sini the force is going up. This one the force is going down. Okay, always from the strong to the weak. But this is if this is north and this is south lah. Okay, remember the direction of the north and south is very important. Okay. So what will happen to the coil? The coil will move how? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Anti. Okay, it will move anti-clockwise. You'll find that AB will move downwards. Okay. 
and CD will move upwards. And so the rotation now will be anti-clockwise. Okay, and as I said just now, in the previous example, uh, Sini on the right side is north, north Bakan, and then this side was south. And we find that it moves, you know, it, it will rotate clockwise. Okay, this is something that uh, some of my previous students are uh, used to do, uh, and I really advise you against doing this. Uh. Some of them, they memorize the four patterns. Okay, okay, if the north is here, the south is here, and it's, and it's going like this, it will rotate this way. If the north is here, the south is here, then it rotate like this, it will go this way. I say no 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 don't 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 make your life difficult lah. okay don't make your life difficult you should actually just use Fleming's left hand rule okay it helps you to determine uh which side goes up and which side goes down so this is the same example as just now okay except that here north is here this is south lah. okay and the direction of the this one is uh this way so my question to you is how do you use Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of the force. Okay, take some time, uh, everybody. Take out your left hand. Left hand, left hand, left hand, left hand, left hand. Okay, take your left hand uh, and try to determine AB. Uh, okay, AB is going to go up. Lah. Okay, let me, I, I'll just give you the answer straight. Lah. AB is going to go up and CD is going to go down. But I need you to use your left hand, practice. Uh, Okay, north to south is here, direction current is going in, where is it going? Like that. Okay, take some time to do this, please. So, again, uh, we use the same two methods to determine the force. Okay, except that now in a coil, uh, when you have the two forces figured out, okay, bahagian sini dan bahagian sini, when you have the two forces figured out, okay, then only you can determine the rotation of the coil, whether it is going clockwise. Okay, mengikut arah jam atau anti-clockwise. Okay, anti-clockwise is melawan arah jam. Okay, but the question that needs to be asked now is, why are we not talking about BC? BC also got current flow. Why is there no force on BC? Anybody? Because it's parallel to the magnetic field. Very good. Okay, because the direction of the current is parallel to magnetic field. Okay, uh, Lorentz force, uh, Lorentz force only works uh, when all these three are perpendicular to one another. Okay, and this morning before, uh, there were this morning there were these three very interesting people in your class that I don't know what they were doing in biology, but they came into the Google Meet earlier and they decided to show their capabilities of doing the perpendicular hands to, to me, and I was watching. Uh, with a lot of amusement. Lah. Okay, so, um, yeah, these three people, tiada kerja lain ini. So, anyway, remember, uh, B and I, uh, okay, the magnetic field and the current uh, cannot be parallel to one another. They must be perpendicular. That's why BC, okay, bahagian sini, uh, doesn't experience a force. Yeah, lah, I know, current is flowing this way, but the magnetic field is flowing this way, bahkan, from north to south, but it's still parallel. Even if they are opposing one another, it's still parallel, and so there is no force created over there. Okay, all right. So now the question is this: you know, what is this? Apa ini? <laughs> okay, you've seen this a few times already. Yeah? So the question is, what does this do? Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about next, lah. Okay, we're going to talk about the working principle of a direct current motor. Okay, and you actually find uh, that direct current motor. We use this uh, a lot uh, before even realizing it. Small electrical appliances like children's toys, okay? Anything that has to rotate, fan, portable drills, even your computer, okay? The hard disk of a computer, uh, there is actually a small direct current motor. Slightly bigger ones would be electric vehicles, okay? Lifts, sorry, lifts, rollers in factories, Okay, anything that changes electrical energy to kinetic energy by using the turning effect, okay, is a motor. Okay, menggunakan tenaga elektrik untuk menghasilkan tenaga kinetik, okay, is the basic of a motor. Not just motosikal. Okay, motosikal, nothing to do with this, okay, unless it's an electric motor. Okay, so a motor, okay, a motor is a device uh, that changes electrical energy to kinetic energy. 
Okay, and look around you, uh, okay, I bet you in your room right now uh, or wherever you are, if you're like uh, some people, they are studying in the hall, right? If you look around you, uh, I bet you, you can identify at least five things in that room, uh, at least five things in the, in your room that are having a motto in them. Okay, paling paling pun bahkan your phone lah, with which you are looking through this class right now, there is a motto in there. The fan that is above you or next to you, okay, has a motto in there. Okay, your baby sister or baby brother's toy, okay, there is a motto in there. And so we want to know how all this relates. How does the Lorentz force, uh, how does the force on a current carrying conductor, okay, become the motto? So we learn about the single wire, then we learn about the coil, and we know that if it is a coil, it will rotate. But how does it keep rotating? This is the main point of this part. Okay, so we find uh, that an important component in a direct current motor is this thing called the commutator. Okay, these two benda yang sebenarnya kan kalau kita lihat bahkan dia langsung tidak bersambung. Uh. <coughs> the commutators are not touching one another. But technically, kalau you follow the path of the current kan, it is like this lah. Okay, these two are actually not touching one another at all. Okay, now this thing uh, rotates, the commutator rotates with the rectangular coil. Okay, and the carbon brushes are in contact with the commutator in their fixed positions. So it's like this. Huh? If let's say this is the commutator, okay, and let's say this is the carbon brush, sorry, this is the commutator, this is the carbon brush, okay. So when it is rotating, huh, okay, let's say, uh, okay, I'm going to take the red side, lah, okay, red side, this is the red side, okay, the red color. Lah. So when the commutator rotates, huh, as it is rotating, it's going to touch the carbon brush. Okay, but after a while, bila dia pergi ke sebelah sini kan, yang bersambung di sini pula adalah yang berwarna biru. So the commutator and the carbon brush now is always touching one another, except for, except for this small part, sorry, except for this small part, okay, where there is a gap. Okay, ada satu ketika yang sangat kecil lah, yang sangat sekejap, where the commutator and the carbon brush are not touching one another. Okay, but the Carbon brushes are in contact with the commutator and are fixed in their position. So carbon brush is fixed. Commutator yang berpusing. Okay, then as the commutator is spinning, okay, the commutator is spinning because there is a force over here. So the coil is actually causing the commutator to spin. When the commutator spins, okay, it will continue spinning. Okay, because, okay, because of this, huh, let's take a look at this. So this is the first half of the rotation. Okay, this is in your textbook. Lah. I think this is in your textbook. Okay. First half rotation like this. Okay, so the carbon brush X is in contact with the red half of the commutator. Current flow is this way. Using Fleming's left hand rule, you know that this is going to go down and this is going to go up. So it's going to turn in an anti clockwise direction. Okay, so coil rotates in one direction. Now, on the second half, okay, we see that the blue color has already shifted to this side. And the red color has already shifted to this side. Okay, but we find that the current flow is still the same, you know. Although it has switched sides, the current flow is still the same. And that is the main purpose of the commutator to ensure that the current flows in one direction. Okay, if we don't have the commutator, what's going to happen to this is going to go back and forth, back and forth, which is totally pointless because we want the motor to spin one way. We don't want it to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not good. Lah. Okay, so that's the point of the commutator, to ensure that the current flows in one direction only. Notice that the direction of the force huh, tidak berubah, walaupun kedudukan commutator berubah. Okay, the only thing that is different uh, between the first page, the first picture and the second picture is the position of the commutator. Look at everything else. Everything else remains the same. Because the function of the commutator is to make sure that the current flows in one direction only. Okay, so let's look at how the direct current motor works. Okay, so uh, all these are coil, permanent magnet. These are the carbon brushes, okay? 
and then this C shape thing over here, the half C shape lah. Okay, these are called the commutators. So the function of the electric motor, as I said just now, is to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. Okay. So we label these parts already lah. Okay, let's talk about the next one. Lah. Two magnetic fields that interact from A, B, C, and D. Okay, this is already mentioned by Lester, so I'm not going to waste time. Permanent magnet, magnetic field, and the current carrying coil. This is very normal. Current carrying conductor. Okay, the two magnetic fields. Always there because current is flowing. So show on diagram and state the direction of the forces experienced by the side. A, B, and C, D. Okay, take some time and do this, please. A, B, naik atas ke turun bawah? C, D, naik atas ke turun bawah? A, B, ke bawah. A, B, ke bawah. Okay, use Fleming's left hand rule to determine that A, B is going to go downwards and C, D is going to go upwards. Okay. <coughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Fleming. So, what about the road? Uh, the rule de to determine the direction of the force will be Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, the rule that we've been talking about since yesterday. So, what is the effect of the two forces produced on the side A, B, and C, D to the motion of the coil? A pair of forces in opposite direction okay, is produced to rotate the coil. And so, because of this, what is the direction of rotation of the coil? Ini, ini coil ini akan berputar macam mana? Clockwise. Clockwise. Okay, it's going to rotate in a clockwise direction. Okay, that's what we've been doing so far lah. Now we're going to talk about the commutator. What happens to the contact between the commutator and the, this one when it is vertical position? Okay, so over here we find out that as I said just now, there is a gap in between the commutator. So when the coil is in half position like this, okay, there is no contact. And when there is no contact, there is no current flow. If there is no current flow, there is no turning force. Okay, now let me ask you. If there is no turning force, uh, okay, look at this originally. Uh, originally, ini naik ke atas, ini turun ke bawah. So, it's going to rotate. Tetapi, the rotation can only happen if there is a current. Kalau ada arus mengalir, baru dia akan rotate. Tetapi, at this stage, at this stage, uh, there is no current flow because broken already. Terputus sudah. Dia punya anu, current flow. So, this is a very important question for us, you know. What makes the coil continue to rotate? What do you think? Apa yang menyebabkan the coil continue to rotate? It has to continue to rotate, otherwise the fan won't work. Hmm. If there is no current flow, there is no force. So, why does it continue rotating? Okay lah. This is the clue ah, that is very important. Inertia. Inertia. Okay. The coil is already rotating. And although you don't provide, okay, although you don't provide any current to it, it will continue to rotate because there's nothing stopping it. Okay, this sudah mula bergerak, but the only thing you stop is just, you know, this one. but because there is inertia, okay, it will want to remain in its motion. Okay, and imagine, uh, I mean, this is the beauty behind this law, you know, that everything uh, is somehow connected. You no, know? We have connected this subtopic uh, to Bernoulli's principle and now we are connecting it uh, to inertia. So everything is connected. Okay, inertia causes this coil uh, to continue moving because there's nothing stopping it. Unless kamu letak computer tangan di sana lah, that one's a different story lah. Just because there is no current doesn't mean it's going to stop rotating. Okay, and it's going to keep going on until you finally, you know, turn off the current for good. Okay, because the massa dia, uh, no, tidak bersentuh ni kan, sangat sekejap lah. It's like only a little bit only. So the inertia of the coil will make it want to remain in its position. Okay, same thing that happens here. The direction of the coil now is DCBA. Okay, except that now we change the this one Okay, compare the direction of the current in the coil for position in diagram A and the position in diagram B. Uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, this is just now. Okay, reverse. So the function of the commutator, this one, uh, 
to reverse the direction of the current in the coil for each half of its rotation, this one, so that the coil continues to rotate in the same direction. Okay, this is the thing that I want you to memorize today. <laughs> okay, yeah, the, the problem with this chapter is there are a lot of things to understand, and sometimes to understand it, we have to memorize certain things. Lah. Okay, memang kamu kena hafal ni. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sense. Okay, memorize the function of the commutator. So two things to memorize are number one, the working principle of a co uh, current carrying conductor. Secondly, memorize the function of the commutator. Commit this to heart, people. Okay, to reverse the direction of the current in the coil for each half of its rotation so that the coil will continue to rotate in the same direction. To make sure that the current is always flowing in the same direction. Walaupun kedudukannya sudah berubah. Okay, the direction uh, over here will be still the same. Okay, upward and downward, it will still rotate clockwise. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to end here. Lah. So, this is what is happening. <coughs> okay, so at first, it's going to go down and here. And then over here, there is no current flow, but it will continue to spin, okay, because of inertia. Okay, and then after that, it's going to go here. Uh, and we find that the force is still the same. Okay, and then we and then it's going to continue. And then berbalik, 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 berbalik. Okay, and so this is your assignment for the day. Yeah? I want you to either take a book or take a, this one. Lah. Okay, you take a book or you take a phone. Okay, if you have another thing to record a device with. Huh? You pretend that one side is called A, B, A, B, C, D. Lah. Okay, A, B, C, D, okay, and you use this uh, to explain to me how a direct current motor works. I will give you an example, uh, okay, I will give you an example, but I want everybody to be able to do this explanation. Okay, uh, yeah, on your own. Same thing, uh, you will send your video in Telegram. <laughs> yeah, I've decided that... I think we just use Telegram only lah. It's so much easier for me to check than kalau kau pakai Flipgrid makan. Which was good lah, okay? It's good, but it's a little bit of a hassle lah. I think Telegram is so much easier just record the video. But uh, but okay, but the thing is this ah, uh, There is a catch to this explanation. Explanation must be done in one take. So, no need to edit the video, no need to, no need to put words that are cantik cantik, no need background music, no need editing. Just take a video, one thing, uh, explain to me how the direct current motor works. What causes the direct current motor to rotate? Okay, continuously. So state the function of the commutator and remember to mention about inertia. Okay, the inertia causes the coil to continue to rotate. Okay, so your assignment for today, uh, selain daripada menghafal the function of the commutator, is also to do a one take video okay one take means uh, you yeah, like, you can have many takes but when i see the video uh, i don't see a cut tiba tiba ada cut di sana kan sangat ketara yang kamu edit no edit video uh. okay one take means you see in front of a camera and you explain to me using a book you can use a book or you can if you have something like smaller also can lah. okay you can do this but pretend that this is a coil Explain to me how this side goes up, how this side goes down, and why does it continue rotating? Okay, because one of the more important things uh, in this chapter is to explain how the direct current motor works. You can ask any of the seniors last year. I made them do this, and I forced them to memorize these few things, because these are the very this to me lah. These are very popular uh, questions. Okay, uh, that of popular explanation questions. So I want you to be able to commit this to memory and hopefully that uh, memory will stick with you. Lah. Okay? Mm -hmm.